Hey guys, I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about why we put a DX in our integral. So in my last video, I talked about why we have to put a plus C in indefinite integration. So I'm going to put the link above so that you can go watch it. So let's start with today's video. If you look at this graph, this is our function f of x and we basically have to find the integral from a to b of this function. So that is just the area under the graph. But how will we calculate the area under a graph or let's say this curve? If we try to approximate using rectangles, we'll have some area left. So if you looked in the graph, there were only six rectangles. What happens if we increase the number of rectangles? And since we're increasing the number of rectangles, that would mean the value of delta x would decrease because we're still under the same boundary. So delta x is defined as b minus a which is the upper boundary and the lower boundary divided by the number of rectangles we want. So every time we increase the value of n, delta x decreases and the rectangle gets closer and closer to just becoming a straight line or just the height at that very small point. So let's take the value of n closer to infinity. That would give us such a small value of delta x that we call it dx. Because the base of the rectangle is so small, there will almost be no room for error and it will be exactly like summing up the height at each point with extremely negligible difference between the two points. So this is the definition for dx and I hope you guys understood why we need to put the dx because that represents the base of each rectangle we're using to calculate the area under the graph. If you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like, comment and share it with your friends. Hey guys, if you've made it till here, you're a legend. Please click here and subscribe for more content and keep watching.